Hello, welcome back to Doing BART Things, and today um, we're going to talk about some CPU and some video card news. Um, main thing uh, I want to start off with is, uh, so the 4000 series for NVIDIA is not selling well, the, the 4070 specifically, which, I mean, shocker, it's uh, not a good buy. Um, and I think, um, and I believe that people are just more... Uh, intelligent about what they buy than NVIDIA or any of these companies believe, I think. And so when you release a product that basically is insulting people's wallets, they tend to <laughs> not buy that product. Uh, so anyway, uh, I suspect prices and things will, will drop on that uh, as time goes on. Um, and maybe it'll get to a place where it's a more, um, it's easier to stomach that buy. Uh, for the right system and circumstance. But uh, something that uh, came up today um, and just kind of me going around the net is the 6950XT continues to be a great, I think, uh, a real sweet spot kind of deal. Uh, there's one, the MSI, specifically on Newegg here, and I reckon if you look around the web, uh, maybe it's your favorite e-tailers, um, not necessarily, you don't have to necessarily go to Newegg, but I think if you look around, you might come up with similar deals, but uh, this for 580 bucks, a 6950XT, that's uh, that's pretty strong. Um, that's a really, that's a pretty strong card. Again, that was top of the line last gen for AMD um, for 580 bucks. I would hazard a guess that I, uh, it's, I mean, it's probably stronger than my 3080. Um, just raw frame rate, rate wise and it's probably uh, you know without any of the fancy DLSS 3 uh, which again I, I have my own doubts about um, I I don't know I get really weird about like frame generation and software and things like that because I just think at the end of the day the way that those things are going to make the same the 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 GPU through software faster and make more frames is basically it's like I don't want to say cheating but it's sort of you know it, the, it's not magic like there has to be something given up somewhere to get those frames because the raw horsepower of the video card is not uh, and I'm no I'm using a weird term the raw horsepower the raw throughput of the card is not as high like a 4070 or 4070 Ti I don't think has the throughput that this uh, 6950 XT does. Um, but it, so in order to get like the higher frames, there's some chicanery that has to happen with the, the software. So I don't completely trust it, <laughs> I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, and I know like their DLSS and FSR and stuff has been around for a while. Like uh, I'm not opposed to necessarily using it. I just don't think it's, um, um, I, it's a weird thing to reference and I'm not so sure it's, uh, perfect to, to use. It's, I don't know. It's, to me, it's weird. Uh, maybe I just need to play around some DLSS some more, um, on my 3080, maybe DLSS two or something and see what I think. Um, but anyway, it's a very strong card for that money. Um, and if I was trying to build a system and get the most oomph I could get, out of say a fifteen hundred to two thousand dollar machine, I would probably uh, for just a gaming rig, I would probably go with something like this. Um, I've said it before, but like it, there keep there continues to be these deals. And I think that's probably because we're leading into the um, mid range seven thousand series cards from AMD is why these are right now getting to be kind of a bargain, and I think they will continue to be a bargain again for the next. However long it takes NVIDIA, um, not sorry, not NVIDIA, uh, AMD to get their uh, 7800, 7700 cards out. Um, and uh, they've had a, it seems like they're really prolonging that. There's been kind of a delay there, and I don't know exactly why. Um, the rumor mill has been, they're looking good, but there's certain things they're trying to work on to get knocked out. Maybe that's FSR3 that they're working on. I don't know. Um, you're welcome to go look at Red Gaming Tech or uh, 
Um, what's another one? Um, maybe Gamers Mill. I don't know. Like, there's there's a number of channels out there that you can go and check Rumor Mill. Um, anyway, but we'll we'll get it when we get it. I think. Uh, and to me. Um, those cards should be interesting, but I don't think that the 7800 is necessarily going to be that much faster than a 6950 XT. I think they'll be very similar in raw performance, um, and I think, or at least I suspect, the reason why we don't have a 7800 yet is because AMD knows that's not going to tremendously outperform this card. They're probably waiting to do the same kind of trick that NVIDIA has done, which is wait for the FSR3 to come out. Then they can apply that to the 7800, uh, and maybe it's a little bit more optimized for it, and thus it will be um, you know, a little bit better at that. And they can show some sort of generational improvement, or at least matching of this card. Um, and I think it will match this card, and it'll be around the same price, which... You know, again, that's one of those one way, half dozen the other. Maybe it'll be at less power. I don't know, um, but it, it could be. It could be kind of like the forty seventy, not the forty seventy. Um, yeah, the forty seventy. Yeah, where I, I'm, I'm just basically like, why, uh, why bother? Because it's no faster than a thirty eighty. So if you have a thirty eighty, um, or even something that's not a 3080, but just close to it, 3060 to 3070, you know, it's just not enough of an upgrade to justify going out and dropping um, 600 bucks for. Um, at least that's my opinion. And people are free to do with their money what they wish, absolutely. Um, that's just that's just my opinion, you know. The 4070, honestly, um, just, again, it, it was, really bad and I think the 4060 is actually going to be even worse um, from the uh, basic details that I've seen about it I think it's going to be um, even a worse buy so we'll have to see but I would say if you're in that $600 price range and you're looking to build a machine right now uh, yeah take a gander at these see uh, see what you think you know look at some benchmarks and specific games that you play and see if uh, you know this may be an option for you because that's a really strong video card um, for that money and I think it is more future proof because of the amount of memory it has on the card versus something like a 4070 um, that's around the same price which only has 12 gigs this has 16 gigs um, and I think has more throughput because it's got a higher uh, bit uh, bus and you know just it's a beefier card it's gonna take more power uh, it's going to run a little hotter. Size of case also may be a consideration. These are pretty big cards because these are the top of the line cards the last gen. So there's some things to consider there potentially, but I think um, overall performance goes to this card over the other card. So if that's what you're really after, which, you know, unless you have a very specific use case, why wouldn't you be? Um, I think that these, these are definitely worthy of consideration. Um, next topic, just going to move on. Um, so, not all is well in AMD land. Um, we've got a couple of 7800 X3Ds that have blown up. Um, a little bit sensationalist title, but there may be something here to this. So, um, this is a pretty popular Reddit pick. You can see here the CPU actually deformed and it deformed into the board. So this board and the CPU are no longer good because the socket is now bad. Um, I don't know what is going on here. I think, what this appears to be to me <clears throat> is, and I was, watching um, UFD Tech talk about it and they were basically something was going on where they were running this CPU like all the time um, they had enabled Expo which is like external uh, overboost clock something you know they they had like a little overclock going on this thing um, 
So the X3D chips are very sensitive to voltage. <clears throat> um, because of the 3D V cache. So whenever you have something that's stacked on top of something else, then that adds another layer to try and dissipate heat. And uh, while the technology is amazing because you can actually stack cache and get a lot of cache in a small area, you know, you're stacking three, you're stacking vertically, right? And when you do that, um, you introduce um, another barrier for whatever's underneath that stack, more cache, right? So you have 3D stack cache, it's cache on top of cache. Uh, so that's another layer that needs to dissipate heat. That cache runs very fast. So it's going to generate some heat. And um, this is kind of a reminder that maybe with these chips, we need to kind of err on the side of caution a little bit. Um, there's a reason why AMD reduced the overall uh, TD or what do they call it TDP total uh, total was that total die power total package power whatever uh, but anyway they they basically reduce the power budget for this chip so you can only go to to a certain amount uh, there are ways these motherboards have such a wide breadth of settings um, that you can. And I think it was Scatterbencher um, actually did an overclock on one of these chips and was able to get it to clock up to 5400 megahertz or something like that. Um, but as you can see here, I mean, you, you do need to be a little careful um, with these chips. They are very, um, they are very sensitive to voltage. So I wouldn't go uh, too ham on this. It's also the case why, I mean, it, just leave them at stock. They perform super well, and I don't think you get a massive boost um, from overclocking them um, to the point where I would almost suggest this is a great chip to put in a small form factor gaming rig because of that, right? Uh, the temps are lower than the just regular X counterparts. They are very specific to gaming uh, as far as what they perform very well in. So I almost kind of think you maybe even undervolt it. You put it into a mini ITX or micro ATX rig, um, air cool it, you know, um, and just leave it be, uh, I think is what you do with these chips to the, to the, for the most part. I mean, there's tweaking that can be had, um, but that's kind of my suggestion as far as an ideal use case for this chip. Um, I don't think this is a chip that you just go balls to the wall um, and try to overclock hardcore. I mean, people are doing it to just see what they can get out of them. And I think there's a tiny little bit of performance you can wrinkle out, which will be the next thing I, um, uh, next uh, video there I click over onto it from YouTube. It's a, um, a guy named Frame Chasers who actually deleted one of these things and it's playing around with it but I really um, yeah I really don't think this is a uh, unless you really know what you're doing um, and you're prepared to take this risk you know don't uh, don't be going in there and and trying to push these things to the the edge um, I don't think they do well with that and that's totally okay um, it doesn't mean it's a bad chip. It just means maybe don't poke the bear too hard with these guys um, because that V-cache heats up a lot and uh, you may find yourself <laughs> having to do an RMA or, or figure something else out. So, um, but you can see here, that's pretty crazy deformation, actually. Like on the chip itself, it looks like it burned up these pins here as well. Um, I think... Gamers Nexus actually reached out and asked for this board and chip. Um, they offered to pay the guy. I think he's sending it to him. So I'll be really excited to see what those guys find out about this. Um, and of course, I'll make a video on it with their findings um, because I'm just curious. But um, yeah, I think my two cents is just looking at this. Uh, it was pushed pretty hard for it. And... Um, 
So I'm positive this is where the die is, and that's probably that uh, cache and the chip got very, very hot. Um, and they basically burned the socket. But I don't think this was simply, um, I don't think this is simply um, the chip in its default configuration doing that. This person did turn on the external uh, clocks or whatever. They, they were definitely tweaking this chip. This is not like a regular setup from the factory. So I would not be too concerned if you have one of these chips um, as long as you're not running the Expo. Uh, that's what uh, that's what they called it. So, um, And I'm trying to remember what that is. Um, I'm sorry guys, I'm old. <laughs> uh, but basically they were tweaking it, right? They were pushing it and they were trying to get the um, they were trying to get the most out of it. This is an Asus uh, Strix something, uh, top end board, it's, or very high end board. Um, and they were playing around with the um, external clocks and stuff. And um, it got really hot. So anyway, I'm sure Gamers Nexus will have a whole write up about it. Um, credit to Asus and AMD have both been all over this thing, trying to like, hey, let's Let's dive into this and see what happened. You know, um, Asus has even said, "Hey, you know, work with us to get your RMA if you want." Um, doesn't sound like he'll need an RMA if this goes to Gamers Nexus because they're actually paying the full retail price for the chip and the motherboard to this guy, so he can go get some new hardware and they can they can have a nice uh, thing to do content about. So anyway, but I just wanted to kind of put this out there as a little like PSA. If you have a 7800 X3D. Um, I would say 7900 X or D, 7950 X or D. If you have any of these chips, um, you know, just kind of watch what you're doing there. Make sure that you are not uh, leaving it pushed to the nines all the time. Um, kind of back off that. I, I really don't think these chips like that, um, as evidenced by this. But you know, uh, but then again, you know, do your research. And if you're super um, uh, if you're super good with this, like you are really in the know, um, you're like a scatterbencher or something like that, and you understand the risks and you um, accept those and you choose to push it, all, all more power to you, right? Uh, go for it. But for the average average person, I would say just kind of, you know, uh, don't, don't get yourself too deep in the weeds here and burn up your chip. Um, so, <clears throat> last thing, also about the 7800 X3D, um, frame chasers. <laughs> he killed the 7800 X3D, but the way he did it is he tried to do a direct die mount, and I think it got off and he broke his chip. So, <laughs> um, that's another way to break an, uh, a chip. A perfectly good processor is to delid and then get a bad mount. Um, these chips are very fragile. So, back in the day, uh, I think it was. Uh, Thunderbird, yeah, AMD Athlon Thunderbird. Uh, I actually broke one with a bad mount, and we actually chipped it. Um, so that was all the way back then. These chips now are much more dense, much more delicate. Um, so the, that's that's the two things that a heat spreader does, and the reason why the chips have heat spreaders on them is twofold. Uh, number one, they distribute the weight of the and, and, uh, application of your cooler across a wider area. And then number two, they distribute the heat from this little die out to this heat spreader. That, that's the two objectives of having that. <clears throat> one, it protects the chip, and two, it, uh, uh, it's you know, it, it widens the area a little bit um, where the heat is, ideally. Um, which is why it's called a, like is it, what is IHS, is integrated heat spreader? Uh, anyway, but it, it basically, um, it's, a, you know, that's what it's there for. So that way you can sense your um, cooler down on it and you can, uh, if, as long as you do it right and you get a good mount, you're not worried about the chip breaking. Um, which makes, that's why direct die mounting 
of a cooler is a little bit risky. And what most people do is when they delid, is they will take the uh, actual heat spreader, they'll do what's called lapping, which is make it, they'll, uh, they'll sand it down to make it very flat, uh, which helps because in the manufacturing process of those things, sometimes they get a little, um, they get a little uneven. The Intel heat spreaders are actually even kind of concave. Um, and a lot of the coolers are a little bit concave and it basically, or maybe not con, they're pro I don't know. But anyway, they fit together, right? They're, they're made in a specific way to try and get better contact. Um, so, um, that's, that's kind of the deal behind that. So if you've, if you've ever wondered like, well, I know that, that piece of material I'm looking at is not the actual chip. Yeah, that's why is because chips are very delicate um, and if you especially that if you take the consideration the AMD one is like different chips right so you have your this is like your IO die this bigger one here so that's all the like connects to PCIe lanes it it sends out video and stuff like that and it communicates with the actual processors the actual cores are here in this chiplet which has eight cores and can process 16 threads right so the eight cores are actually in this little die right here, and then your all of your communications basically is handled. If you think about it, so everything flows into this, and then this communicates with the chips. Um, this is a little bit bigger, and this doesn't quite generate as much heat as this does. This is where these densely packed eight cores in here, um, yeah, that's where your heat is. And if you look over here, like that's where that's where this burned, right? Notice it's off center. That's because if you flipped it over, you would notice that it's this. <laughs> and you look, it actually matches, right? Uh, and that's what happened, right? Is this got really hot? Probably the uh, uh, the actual 3D cache, right? So anyway, but I thought this was interesting. Um, Thermo Grizzly, this company is uh, is run by a guy goes by Dirk Bauer. Um, I don't know, I forget what his actual name is. Mm, anyway, but uh, he is a long time like overclocker, extreme overclocker. Like he does uh, LN2. Um, and, and all that stuff, uh, you know, like extreme overclocking. He makes a series of really cool products um, that are very, usually his stuff is just top of the line. He worked with Lee and Lee on a lot of their cases, uh, the O11 Dynamic, um, which is the original kind of glass case that had side mount fans and stuff um, that everybody, a lot, of, a lot of different companies are now copying. Um, he worked with them on that. Um, and Lee and Lee's been on tear of making great cases since he worked with them. Um, so anything that says Thermal Grizzly, they, they sell their paste, like the Cryonaut and um, stuff. It, it's usually a pretty na trustworthy name brand um, for those things. So I'm pretty sure his contact plate works really well, but um, yeah, like if you ever wondered what looks like underneath that, that piece of metal, uh, that's on top of the CPU. That's it. Um, anyway, I found this a little bit interesting. Um, he actually, like I said, he didn't kill it um, mounting it the way it should be. He killed it going a direct die, I think. Um, which you know, he's. <laughs> I think he can handle it. Like he's, he's testing stuff. He's got hardware. Um, I don't completely see eye to eye. I think with frame chasers, but uh, good on him. Like he's. He's definitely not afraid to tell you his opinion on stuff, and I appreciate that, so that's good. Um, and um, I think um, he did delid and put the IHS back on and do a lap or something, and he got like a couple of degrees, so it wasn't a massive difference, which is not surprising um, um, because, you know, again, these chips, um, uh, they... Yeah, with the V-cache and, and how densely packed they are, you know, you're, it's really tough to get sometimes a temperature drop on this. Intel chips, I think, are a little different. Like, you can get some more uh, headroom with a D-lid than on these chips, I think. Um, even though you reduce the temperature a lot, you don't get a whole ton more headroom because voltage is kind of capped, right? Because uh, basically, they, if you shock too much voltage of these little tiny chips in this little pack, compact area, they do this. <laughs> it's basically, you know, uh, that's how that happens. So anyway, um, so let me see. Um, 6950 XT. 
uh, watch out on your X, your XRDs or any of your XRD chips and make sure that you're not going to blow them up. And here's what one of them looks like delitted. I think I covered everything that uh, just sort of struck me this morning. Um, while everybody enjoys your coffee, maybe you can uh, listen to me, you know, again, pontificate and just talk about stuff. Um, going forward, I think something I'm going to do, if you've stayed with a video this long, uh, I really do want to get to a point where I can do a teardown video on a PC, maybe give some folks uh, some tips and hints on, you know, if they want to do things themselves, um, how they can put uh, a modern PC together. Um, but that's going to require me breaking out the GoPro and finding a place to do it because I live in a very compact house with uh, five people and three animals. So it's not always an easy thing for me to, to get done. But anyway, um, I really hope uh, you guys got something from this video. Um, I appreciate you being patient and uh, enjoying, hopefully, this extremely low rent production by <laughs> yours truly. Um, thank you guys again. Um, have a great Monday. Have a great week if I don't get a chance to make another video and uh, take care. If you'd like to leave a like and subscribe, that would be amazing. Um, I appreciate it as always. Thank you.